Peaches, it's Em, and I'm back today with a brand new video for you today. Today I'm going to be showing you how I hold my tarantulas. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I'm Em, I'm a former zookeeper as well as an animal educator, and I keep a variety of spiders at home. Typically speaking, it is not a good idea to handle any of your spiders. Spiders are all venomous and they all have the ability to bite. Depending on your tolerancy for spider venoms, you might not know until it is too late that you have have an allergic reaction to spiders to either their venom or their urticating hairs, which I'll come on to a bit later on, but generally speaking it's always better never to hold your pet spiders. However, if you wanted to give it a go, it is entirely at your own risk. I'm just going to show you today how I personally do it when I need to move them from enclosure to enclosure for a veterinary exam and also on my presentations. You are not a bad spider owner or keeper if you never handle any of your spiders. There's no more bravery or intelligence to someone who does hold a spider as opposed to someone who chooses not to. Spiders get absolutely no enjoyment or enrichment from being held by humans. It's purely a selfish thing for us to hold them. So with that in mind, just remember that if you do get bitten, it is always your fault, never the spider's fault. Assisting me today with my video is Miss Rosie, the rose-haired tarantula. Before we get started, you'll want to actually wash your hands. Do not use any kinds of soaps or alcoholic rubs because your spider actually smells through its legs. Spiders actually have hairs on their legs, which are scent receptors. So if you smell really, really awful, you have perfumes or found foundation, hairspray, or something unfamiliar to them on your hands, it may make them more prone to bite. So, buckle up, because we are going to be holding Miss Rosie. So before you actually hold your spider, it's really important to wash your hands. Washing your hands will remove any nasty bacteria which could negatively impact your spider. Something else which spiders don't like when it comes to being held is having the little hooks on their legs catch onto your fabric. So if you're wearing a jacket, it's time to remove that. Next up, just roll up your sleeves so that you don't get any fabric caught onto your spider. And let's lift the lid of mystery to reveal our beautiful rose-haired tarantula. Although I know that Miss Rosie usually has a very docile nature, I'm actually going to just double check that before I hold her. The way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to be utilizing this blunt pencil and in particular the rubber tip on the end of its eraser. Let's see how she's feeling today. So I'm just going to gently tap her on these back legs over here. Hey, sleepy. There we go, so she's alert now. From tapping Rosie on the back of her feet using this very blunt eraser very, very gently, I can see that she's not in a bad, bad mood because she's not spinning around and actually trying to bite. She's not displaying her venomous fangs and she's not kicking any urticating hairs. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to place one of my hands very gently inside her travel enclosure and see if she wants to maybe just walk onto my hand. What's really key to remember when you do this is not to make any sudden or jerky movements because your spider needs to feel very secure that you know what you're doing too. If you do move your hand suddenly, it feels like an earthquake to them. So let's see if we can get Rosie to walk very gently onto my hand. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put one hand flat over here and I'm going to ask Rosie just to very gently gently walk onto my hand. Let's go. The important thing is not to have any fear as well because if you have any kind of hesitation then she's going to take that as a lot of fear. There we go. So I'm just going to keep her on my hand and I'm going to let her walk. Now bearing in mind every spider is going to walk at a different pace. Rosie is very very used to walking on people's hands so she feels very safe. Can you see the way that I'm actually walking her across my hands like this? I'm allowing her to move forward and she's able to feel that she's not being restrained in any way. Something else to remember when you're holding your spiders is to be very conscious of your breath. Not because it smells particularly bad, but if I had Rosie right here and I was talking, she'd be able to feel a practical tornado coming out of my mouth, and that would really, really upset her. Spiders don't like to have a lot of air on them at any one time. They're very delicate, so they don't want to be blown around by the wind, which is why whenever I'm holding Rosie, I'm very careful not to talk to her when she's right here in front of me. Say hi, Rosie. 
So right now Rosie is in a really, really relaxed, laid back kind of mood. But remember that this can change for whatever reason really quickly. So you want to make sure that your attention is fully on your spider at all times. If I were to accidentally drop Rosie, which would be a terrible thing to do, she could actually die. The reason why is because spiders are very delicate creatures. Spiders have what's known as an exoskeleton. So they have no hard bones on the inside. Their bones are technically on the outside holding everything together and if I were to accidentally drop Rosie from even this height despite leaning on a table which is no more than a foot beneath her she could still die what could happen is her abdomen this big tummy bit on the back here um, that could actually rupture and she could bleed to death or any other part of her her legs her cephalothorax any of that could actually shatter and she could bleed internally to death very slowly now let's talk very briefly about allergies some people, if they're bitten by spiders, have no kind of reaction whatsoever. Other people, if they're bitten by the same spider, actually can go into anaphylactic shock. So if you do, for whatever reason, happen to get bitten by a pet spider or even a wild spider, it's a very good idea to get checked out by a medical professional. Remember how I was speaking before about her urticating hairs? These are the patches of hairs on the back over here, which if she was very upset, she would use these back legs over here to kick them. It almost looks like she's scratching her abdomen when she does it and that actually releases urticating hairs into the atmosphere and if I were then to inhale those I would have a very difficult time breathing if they get in your eyes your eyes become very itchy and the urticating hairs can cause an allergic reaction anywhere they touch your body so it's a very important thing to remember that if your spider does for whatever reason start kicking hairs anywhere which they can do at any point even when they're stationary like this just put them away put them down and wash your hands with soap and water. Now Rosie's just started to move again. At no point do I ever force her to walk, so she's taking everything in her own time. If I do need to entice her to move slightly forwards, I move the hand she's on backwards ever so slightly and she moves forwards onto this hand. Now let's say you start to accidentally turn your hand like this. This is something that a lot of spider keepers will do, is they'll start to turn their hand like this. Don't worry if you do, just keep your hand in a good space like this in front nice and flat and your spider will feel much happier being on a flat surface as opposed to your hand which is on its side. This next technique is one that even I don't feel all that comfortable in doing just because I'm afraid of hurting the spider. So I'm going to be asking my zoologist fiance Danny to step on in and help us out with this next technique. Hi, it's me, Danny, and apparently you need me to show you the tarantula love group. It's helpful for veterinary exams, it's helpful if they have a very common parasitical infection of nematodes, which tends to happen a lot in tarantulas. It looks like white foaming around their mouth. You're gonna have to hold them like this and dab that stuff off with a solvent to get them healthy again. Like I said, it should really only be done if you have to do it. There is a very high risk of harming this spider if you do this the wrong way. Not to mention if you drop them or if the spider gets agitated and bites you. Now, we're really lucky that Rosie kind of puts up with this because it's been a long time that we've been doing this together. So she knows that I am not out to harm her. But if you use this for a, a spider, you have to be careful because once you release them, they can actually get very defensive after that and you can be bitten. So like I said, don't do this unless you absolutely necessarily have to. And rule number one is you must be calm and number two is you must be gentle. Remember, they are actually really, really frazzled creatures, right? That cephalothorax, which is the area where we're going to be grabbing them, is actually really delicate. It's kind of made with a dome shape, which makes it vulnerable to breakage. So if you squeeze or if the spider struggles in the wrong way and you crack that, it is game over because that is where the spider's really important parts are, like its mouth, it's part of its digestive tract, its eyes, even its brain to an extent. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, right now, Rosie is positioned really nicely for this. Um, what you want to do is you want to grab in between the first set, the first two legs and the last two legs, right? So right here and right here are going to be the gripping points. And we're going to grip on the cephalothorax right in between the two leg sets. Um, it's important that you grab that right at this point because if you grab it asymmetrically, which means if you grab it unevenly at the wrong points, you couldn't really hurt the spider by applying pressure in ways that you shouldn't apply, right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to lean up a little bit here to attempt to grab and I'm going to grab her and show her. Come on girl, it's okay. Come on. 
What I'm really trying to do most is prevent her from being agitated to the point where um, I have to worry about her kicking hairs, which is what she would probably be prone to doing. So you can see I've grabbed her in between the first set of legs and the last set of legs. And this allows me to show off like some of her more sensitive areas, which you don't get to see on a tarantula, like her fangs and her mouth. And then once again, if you have to do a medical procedure, this is how you would do it. You would sit there and you would swab and clean the mouth. And you can also examine the book lungs, which are located right there. It's those little slits on the abdomen. That is where she actually breathes from. And sometimes you can um, see if tarantula are not doing well if they're sick by taking a look at their book lungs and of course their spinnerets which is where tarantula poop comes from yay <laughs> um, tarantula poop comes from there and it can build up there and if it builds up in the back of their abdomen once again it's usually because of some kind of disease or parasite issue and you're gonna have to get in there and clean that right but once again I do not recommend you do this hold on a spider unless you absolutely have to you see the way her legs are folded back comfortably on my hands that shows you that um, they're kind of in a position that's natural for the spider, so I don't have to worry about her bending it at the wrong way and breaking and hurting her legs. And the front legs are relaxed. They're up there in the front right now. They're free to move around, but they're semi-relaxed, which shows me that she's okay. She's not struggling. She's not kicking. I guarantee you that the first time you use this grab on a spider, they're going to start kicking around, and it's kind of a harrowing experience, right? So you don't want to do this once again unless you need to. So I'm going to Put her back down now, and we're gonna be very, very gentle and let her feel all her legs on the ground. And you can see she's not agitated, right? She hasn't kicked off, she's not trying to run away. Um, these are all really good signs that she's okay with this, which is really important from the get go when I started doing this with her. So that was the tarantula love grab. Hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Did you? I did. I'm coming for you. <laughs> Thank you, Danny, for showing us that other wonderful technique for how to examine a spider at the vet's office. Now, another way you can actually do this is just by having a small perspex enclosure, which makes it easy for the vet to actually hold up the spider and really examine in the light. So if you don't want to actually hold your spider at the vet's, that's another hands-off way that you can give your vet a really good close-up look at what's going on with your spider. Now, although Rosie is not showing any kinds of signs of stress or aggravation, I don't want to push her to that point where she is, so I'm going to wrap up her handling session now and leave her to rest. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Thank you guys all so much for watching. I will see you in another video soon. Bye!